Got something here. Hi and welcome back. So today we're doing something a little different. I'm uh, going to try and do a little bit of prospecting for um, some artifacts for uh, an area here on the property that I think there was some early settlement uh, from early European settlers. So stick with me and uh, hopefully we can find some artifacts. So when this uh, property was first surveyed back in the 1850s, 1860s, as part of the, um, I guess, the early gold rush here in Australia, um, there were some surveys done that um, uh, sort of defined the lots of the property and the boundaries and so on. And that got included when um, I bought into this property. So I was looking back on the original surveys and I noticed there were some areas that were, had some interesting marks. One of them in particular had the word hut and also nearby they had like patches called potatoes. And that seems pretty strange to see out here in, in the bush. So I'm hoping to try and isolate where that is. Um, there are two spots on the property. The first one we'll be looking at is near the, an area which has a natural spring. So my thought is to try and isolate where that area is and uh, do a bit of prospecting. I've got a metal detector. Um, hopefully we can find some artifacts. But let me explain why I think the settlers might have been here. And then um, we'll go from there and see what we can see. So walking down this kind of first gully area, I'm going to show you where the head of the spring is that they were talking about. We can see here there is an actual water coming out of the ground. And we actually call this area Frog Hollow or the Frog Spring because we do actually hear croaking from this area. So from this hillside, it follows all the way down into a gully that goes way down to the property. And I can actually see some areas of uh, land slip where perhaps the uh, water has undermined the, the soil and um, had a bit of a, a mudslide or a landslip. Um, this is another area we can see that's quite wet over here. Of course the local animals come and drink here so it's quite chewed up but you can hopefully see that's quite wet and also here it's uh it's quite muddy this is you know quite clay which is uh, interesting because the rest of the property does not have this sort of clay soil more water there water runs downhill and as I said down this gully So let me explain why I think why I think that makes sense for early settlers here. The reason it's interesting is because it means that before this land was even surveyed, there were Europeans out here, first um, settlers looking at this country and eking out a bit of an early existence here on this property. And uh, there would have been no trails in, no way to come into this property except on horse. And as you can see it now, the land is very barren, no trees, but when early settlers would have been here in the uh, 1860s or so, there would have been a lot of trees here, a lot of wood, a lot of underbrush, local shrubs and wattles and so on. And so the property would have looked quite different. But coming into the property, the only way in would have been horses. You couldn't have got a cart up here. So you might have had yourself on a horse, a couple of pack horses. You have to put yourself in the mindset of a European, an English person perhaps, coming out to this property, what are the type of things they would have looked for and what would have encouraged them to settle right at this spot here. 
So what I think is if I was an early settler and all I had was perhaps axe, um, some tools that I could carry, I would have looked for somewhere that was very flat and near fresh water. So as I showed you the spring just down the hill here, fresh water is right there. But a lot of this property, as you can see, is just hillside. But there's an area in front of me that actually is flat. So we're about 20 meters away, about 30 yards from where the head of the spring is. And this area in front of me is about the only flat spot in this area. There's, you know, everything else is a gentle hill and so on. But here in front of me, it's flat. And just in this area over here, very flat. So that would have been encouraging for someone looking to actually build some sort of structure to have a flat floor would have been the easiest thing to do. And they would have built it out of the local timber, the local wood, but I doubt they would have been able to saw it into planks. There is a type of structure called a slab wood hut, but even then it would have been difficult for a single person or a couple of people to have built a structure cutting the local wood into slabs unless they had slab axes perhaps it's possible so they might have been able to cut the local wood into slabs but what I think they may have done is made a frame out of wood out of the local timber and used slats of wood and then covered the gaps with an approach which is called uh, wattle and daub, which certainly English people would have been aware of how to build like that. So you, you kind of fill in the gaps with, well, it's called wattle, but really sort of th thin sticks. You sort of weave it in mud and then you, you patch the rest of it up with um, mud and clay. And as I showed you in the spring, there's certainly clay there. And if they had dug out that spring to get uh, a deeper bit of fresh water, there would have been quite a lot of clay to use. So that's what I think the hut was. I think it was a, a wood frame with um, uh, wood beams and then uh, uh, wattle and daub to fill in the cracks, uh, some sort of roof, and that would have been a pretty basic structure just for shelter. The survey wouldn't have called it a hut unless it was something quite basic, just uh, a square kind of four wall building. So there are other things that make me think that it might have been in this area. Uh, I was looking over towards this direction in front of me here and I'm seeing rocks that look like they've been burnt, they've been exposed to fire. Um, if you can see on the hillside, the hill is covered with rocks but they're light coloured and that light colour is from moss and lichen. They've been there for ages exposed to the air and not moved. These rocks in front of me are red colored. They're exactly the same, but they don't have lichen. And these ones here right in front of me show black marks as if they'd been burnt. And this is also in a little depression. I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up, but it actually dips down a little. So this was either inside the shack as a fireplace or outside perhaps where they did some cooking over the fire. Either way, I think I'm relatively close to where the position of this shack was. There's also, if you look around, a lot of wood fragments on the ground, but there's no evidence of a fallen tree in this spot. So again, I think that some of these wood fragments are from perhaps the structure that they built. Using sort of amateur detective thinking, I think uh, I'm pretty close to the area. Before I came up this time to the shack, I did a bit of um, sort of detective work in a way. I got a, um, a Google map satellite view of this area and I took a screenshot of the early survey and I dropped it over where the lots of land now exist and tried to tried to key it into where um, I think this area was because I know where the spring is by correlating the old view over the top of the satellite map I could have a pretty good idea of 
where it was in relation to the spring. But it's still a bit of a rough estimate. They wouldn't really cared about where the shack was specifically, just that there was one here as an identifier. It marks it as kind of directly south of where the head of the spring is. But where I'm seeing these uh, rocks on the ground in front of me, it's not so directly in front of the spring. Of course, the spring might have moved over time. And also what I'm seeing is burnt rocks on the ground may easily have been something that's happened in the last 50 or whatever many years. In any case, what I want to do is uh, send the drone up and have a look overhead. So I've got the drone right on, right on top of me, looking straight down. And if I move uh, forward, we'll have to get an indication of what's on the ground a bit better. I'll go up a bit higher to see if I can see anything. I'm about uh, 30 meters up. There I am at the bottom of the picture. So I'm going to go over where I think the fireplace is. Right here. I can't really see any indications on the ground. There's not really much to indicate much at all. Let's go higher again. That's about 80 meters. Well, unfortunately, the uh, the drone didn't actually show us too much. Uh, just that it's a sort of featureless kind of spot. So I might have to just hunt around on the ground. But um, to do so, I'm going to use this metal detector quite a rudimentary one so I'm just gonna stroll around with the metal detector on this spot here and we'll see if we can find something interesting to dig up hopefully an artifact or two something here I think okay let's have a look No, I think it's just these rocks must have a high iron content in them. That's going to make things a little difficult. Well, I've dug around this area quite a bit and unfortunately it seems like this this depression around here and a lot of the rocks have 
quite metallic. So unfortunately the little metal detector I have is just not up to the task of, of differentiating that. So I think for this attempt we are not going to be able to find anything all day. I've spent probably two hours prospecting around looking for artifacts. I was hoping to find some kind of, uh, I don't know, pewter or um, brass or things like buckles or things that people drop around where they're, where they're living, spoons even, things like that. But there really doesn't seem to be anything here on nothing that I can distinguish with a metal detector. So, unfortunately, can't find anything here. I'll have to try the other site down near the dam. Alright, let's go down there. down near the dam. Behind me you can see the uh, trail that come down the hill and there's the rock crossing I made beginning of this year, still looking good. So we're on the opposite side of the creek that runs uh, down that way to my left. And on the early surveys I'll, I'll try and drop in a picture of it again while I'm talking so you can have a look at what I mean. But in this area, it actually describes not hut, but huts, as in two of them, and it marks two, two squares in this area, um, and also shows a field of what again it calls potatoes. So I've got a bit of a, uh, a mud map drawn out on this bit of paper. Let me show you what it looks like. So here's my little map that simulates what the, um, what the survey showed. So I am standing about here. This is the creek crossing, this is the trail I came down on, the rock crossing here, and then the road I came up and around. So the actual huts describes the word huts. There's a potatoes area here, and this is the junction where the two creeks join, which is just up that bend there. So looking at this mud map, I'm looking for something in this area. And then ahead of me, I don't know, about uh, seven meters, maybe ten yards, directly in front to the north. North is that way. Another dwelling and then uh, the area of potatoes. So I'm going to look in this area, see what I can see, um, see if we need to get the drone up or not to have a look above us. So that's the mission for this afternoon. Have a bit of a look on the ground to see what we can see, hopefully even find some uh, artifacts or at least some sign that there were people here. Um, the early, the early um, surveyor maps of this area are a little loose with the actual um, description of what was here and trying to map up where the creek lines are. They may have moved over time but certainly some of the hills and peaks that they could see shouldn't have moved, but when I look on the satellite image, they don't always uh, correlate. So I've had to sort of do a bit of um, guesswork as to what they were seeing and how they, how they viewed what they were looking at. Anyway, we're going to have a look um, just in front of me over this way first to see if we can see any sign of where they might have put a, a dwelling, uh, maybe a flat area. The way the survey described it, the dwelling was on on uh, this side of where that creek line is. But even though I see a flat area over there, I have to kind of think they would know what a building looked like and it should be on this side of the creek. Again, just thinking of thinking like someone who would first come to this area, what would be easiest to try and settle? I doubt that they would have crossed this creek to use that flat area on this side because it would have meant having to cross the creek every time between the two dwellings unless you wanted to keep them separate but it would have been easier to have had them in the sort of same local area if if you needed them if they were the same family or group or why else would you have two dwellings close together 
So I think I think I'm probably close to where they were seeing another another hut. Though um, what purpose the hut had is hard to say. It isn't really flat just here, but again, this could have easily eroded over over a lot of time. So, so I think first of all, being midday, I'm getting a bit peckish, so I'm gonna I'm gonna light a fire and uh, cook some lunch. Just while I was um, moving some rocks, I found this guy, a large centipede. So, when you're moving rocks, make sure you're uh, always careful about what's underneath. Anyway, I'll leave him go. Just uh, gonna make a simple campfire, cook up some sausages. So um, just cleared an area. I'm just in the shade because the sun, even though it's a cool day, the sun is pretty strong. So it makes sense to try and take advantage of the shade what's here. So I cleared the area. Oh, I'm going to cheat a bit and use a uh, toilet roll filled with dryer lint uh, as a fire starter. And I've got plenty of um, leaf litter. Just move my axe and saw out of the way. So I'm going to put it here. Going to be starting it with a lighter this time. So we're ready to go. I've got my small twigs, medium branches, and the heavier wood there. As I said, not really looking to make a big fire, just a small lunch fire that'll be easy to put out. So that starts quite nicely. Going to put some leaf litter around that. Put our twigs over the top. Put a handful of our larger twigs on top of that. And it should start pretty easily. Nothing like the smell of a Aussie gum tree bush campfire. Fire is starting pretty well, and now I'm going to look for a uh, green branch to make into a make into a fork so I can put my sausages on it. So while the fire started, I've got a nice uh, green branch, um, better than a dry one because the green one will resist catching fire. What I want to do is um, take the bark off each of these forks and then sharpen the point so I can get a sausage on each end of it. So that's the plan. Use the uh, stick fork um, held up, propped up above the fire with these rocks. And I'll give a couple of uh, sausages poked onto the end of these. Get the fire going a bit and uh, we should have lunch pretty soon. While the fire's cooking I was just having a bit of a look around and in the area where the shack uh, sh uh, hut is supposed to be, I can see this cleared area. I don't know if it's cleared, but it's like a roundish shape in the ground where nothing is growing much. So that, that to me means that's where the, the hut was because the ground would have been really uh, tamped down hard and so things are probably finding it hard to grow there. So I don't probably need to put the drone up. I can see where this is straight away. So straight after lunch, I'm gonna I'm gonna check that spot out because that just seems to cry out. That's where it was. Starting to sizzle now. That'll be good. Just while my uh, sausages are finishing off there, just wanted to uh, talk about this channel for a bit. Uh, I had a few comments about the quality of the video and a lot of the videos I take I chose to shoot in 720 um, and that's mainly because of the upload speeds of the internet we have in Australia are fairly poor like I only got like two or three megabits a second upload which is pretty poor but um, a lot of people have asked to uh, for me to improve the quality so 
example, this video and a few recent ones and the ones to come are going to be in 1080 at least. And uh, I hope you enjoy. If you do notice a difference, please let me know in the comments below. Um, so I'm trying to make these uh, more enjoyable for, for all of you. Also, thanks to all my subscribers. Just recently hit the 250 mark as in just 250 but you know that's still a milestone for me and um, I really enjoyed making these videos I hope you enjoy them too always a bit of a mixed bag not all bushcraft a bit like this a bit sort of exploring and trying something a bit different but um, I'm glad you come along I'm glad you're watching and uh, stay tuned for more adventures anyway let's have lunch yeah doesn't that look good Boy, that feels better. Let's get into some uh, hunting for some relics. So I've got the metal detector, spade, pick. I've also got a small little hand rake and a spray bottle in case I find something I need to clean off. Then I'm going to use the metal detector and go up and down kind of as a grid just to see if I can pick anything up. So this is the first find. It looks like it's a um, looks like it's a hand cut nail. The top of the head is not flat. It's got angles on it. And I'm guessing it might have been used in the construction of the whatever hut is here. So there we go. First first artifact. So I'm going to keep looking. Second artifact looks like the um, top of a, a um, coat hanger. So that was about five centimeters, two inches on the ground. All right, we'll just keep looking. Third piece, it's another uh, bit of a nail from what I can tell, just all finding bits of iron really, nothing, nothing more fancy than that and a lot of this is already rusted, it's been in the ground for so long. So I'll just keep looking, I'll let you know if I find anything else interesting. I've looked over the whole area and these are the only things I've managed to really dig up. Quite a few signals but hard to find. So yeah, a bit of coat hanger. I think the rest of these are wire ties. This is certainly a nail, hand cut. Like I said before, the top is angled. So very likely handmade. And of course uh, a 22 shell, more likely recent summer hunting rabbits. Anyway, that's the only thing I've been able to find today. It's getting late in the afternoon, you can see me squinting into the sun. I've had a great day hunting for artifacts from the early settlement days, early uh, people trying to make a mark in their land in this rough sort of country. Of course it's changed so much since then. 
much less trees than there would have been. It would have been a hard place to uh, survive. Even in those days, it would have been touch and go. I couldn't see any evidence of a fireplace or anything like that. Um, but this was certainly where the shack was. This, this round area on the ground behind me, obviously, was where this, this hut was. Thanks for coming along. Thanks for watching me. I uh, really enjoy your company. Thanks to all my subscribers. And I'll see you on the next video. Bye for now.